Hello and welcome back to day two of the course in mastery. Today's exciting. It's about putting your dreams on paper, writing your goals. You'll also see a clip from Olympic gold medalist John Neighbor. Here's Tom. Thanks, Coral. I used to have a problem setting goals. I used to think that if you set goals and didn't achieve them, that you failed. This is how society teaches us. In school, we're told we need to get good grades. If we don't get good grades, we've failed. Nobody wants to fail. So when I set goals, I always set goals I knew I could achieve. That way I always felt like I succeeded. Then a good friend of mine asked me a question. He said, do you want to live a life of mediocrity? I thought, how could I be mediocre? I'm setting goals and I'm achieving them. He said, Tom, mediocrity always sets goals it knows it can achieve. Excellence, however, stretches itself. And although it may never achieve its goals, it always outperforms mediocrity. Do you want to live a life of mediocrity? Setting goals is one of the most important tasks you'll do over these next 30 days. These next 30 days are action oriented. This is not a sit back, relax, and hang out program. This is a lean forward, get out your pen, and start making things happen kind of course. It's a sad fact that most people give in to mediocrity and spend more time planning their vacation than they do their life. Don't you give in to mediocrity. Take action today. Today, we're going to set goals. Here's what I'd like you to do. Number one, get a journal. Not just any old journal, not scraps of paper, but a journal that represents you. Here's why. Over the next 30 days, and hopefully over the next year or two, you'll be writing in that journal your hopes, your ideas, your dreams, your strategies, and you want to look back at that journal and say, this journal represents me. It represents what I'm about. So get a journal that really represents you. The second thing I want you to do is open up that journal and start dreaming. Put your pen down on paper and write for 30 minutes all your goals, your ideas, your strategies, your thoughts about what you want and what you know you deserve for the future. Be specific when you write. Write down in incredible detail everything you want. Act like you're 13 or 14 and you can have anything you want. Don't stop writing or dreaming for 30 minutes. The third thing you want to do is take each goal and write A, B, or C. Now, if you don't have your goals yet, you can't do that. So stop the video and go write your goals. Take 20 to 30 minutes and do that now. Now, A are all the things that are really important. B are the things that you really want but aren't really necessary. And C are those things that, yeah, it would be nice, but I don't have to have it. List them all, A, B, or C. Don't worry if there's more in one category or the other. Just write down A, B, or C based on what you want and how you feel. Don't judge it based on whether you think you can do it or not. Judge it based just on what you want. Go ahead and do that now. The fourth step is to take all the A goals and mark them one, two, or three. Again, one are the ones you really want. Two are the things you like to have but aren't that important. And threes are the well, if I got them, they would be great for all of the A's. Mark them one, two, or three. Again, base this on what you want, not what you think you can accomplish. Step five, take all of the A1's and decide which three would be the ones you want more than any three. Then write out each one on a separate piece of paper. Take each goal and write down in incredible detail why you want that goal, what having that goal would mean for you. Now again, don't worry about whether it can be accomplished or not. Write down the ones that you really, really want. This is critical before we go on to the next step. The final step is to put a date on each goal. Now I know this may be uncomfortable because some of these goals you may not even know how you're going to achieve it. That's okay. How will come later. Right now put a date that stretches you a little bit. Because putting a date on something creates urgency and urgency creates action. And action is what will help you get to your goal. It's important that if you haven't done this yet, to do it now. Don't do it later today. Don't do it tomorrow. Do this now. We know that successful people take action immediately. 
This is really about you. It's for you, not for your boss, not for your significant other or your kids or for anyone else. Do this for you and do it now. Once that's done, you'll start to feel a lot better and you'll also be prepared for tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Thanks, Tom. Today's clip is from Olympic gold medalist John Neighbor, who tells a fascinating story about fellow Olympian Vladimir Salnikov. Let's check it out. Now, what is that area of life that matters most to you? If I were to say, let's see your dream come true, what would that be? You see, if the process of seeing a dream come true, let's begin with step number one, which is frankly having a dream. I'm the parent of a daughter. She's now off in college. I'm an empty nester. But before she left, we talked about what dreams meant. It's not what happens when your head hits the pillow, but rather it's the desire to experience an emotional response. I didn't want to win the gold medal in the 100-meter backstroke nearly as much as I wanted at one point in my life to feel like the best in the world at something. If that feeling comes true, it almost doesn't matter how fast I swam or who is watching. If the feeling comes true, my dream came true. In 1976, I won the lion's share of the medals at those Olympic Games, and a swimmer from the Soviet Union came walking up to me. He says in a voice that sounds like Boris Badenov in the Bullwinkle comics, Congratulations, John. Someday I, too, want to feel like a champion. 1976. They're the evil empire. These are the bad guys. And he's speaking to me in English. It made me read the name on his credential. Vladimir Selnikov. Vladimir Selnikov. I love saying it. It rolls off the tongue like Antonio Banderas. Vladimir Salikov was a distance swimmer. The longest race in Olympic swimming is the 1,500 meters freestyle. Down and back, a 50-meter pool, half the length of a football field, 15 times. Now, the name Roger Bannister is famous for what great achievement? First man to break the four-minute mile. That's a significant barrier because the mile is four laps, four minutes. It's a minute a lap. It's a big barrier. Brian Goodell won the gold medal in the 1500 that year, as he describes in his chapter of my book. And he won the gold swimming the distance in 15 minutes, two and a half seconds, a new world record. The world is knocking on the barrier, the significant milestone, and so we're all waiting to see who's going to be the first man under 15 minutes in the 1500 free. Now, I retired shortly after my Olympics, began a career in broadcasting, and I started doing my research. Now, in 1980, the Olympics that followed mine, that I was all prepared to cover, those were the games Jimmy Carter announced the Americans should not attend. It was the boycott Olympics. So we couldn't go, television couldn't go, we didn't get to cover the Olympics. And I had to wait for the August issue of Swimming World magazine to show up in my mailbox to find out who did what in each event. And on the cover of that magazine was the familiar face of the Russian swimmer. Now, if you get your face on the cover of a magazine, there's a sentence that describes what did he do. But this month, no words, not even a letter. Just the number, 14-58.27. He did it. He broke the barrier, got the gold medal, was the big champion in swimming at those Olympics. And in 1981, I run into Vladimir at the World University Games. I come running up with a microphone. Vladimir, you told me you wanted to feel like a champion. You now have the gold. Was it everything you'd hoped for? And he says, no, John. I do not feel like champion. I win the race, but these boycott games. There's nobody in the pool. 